in, 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 in the calculation of a plea bargain offer, typically the state or the prosecutor would have to ask themselves, can this person help us be led to the mastermind behind the crime? But in this instance, the calculus is the other way around because the mastermind is Chifuro Madoti and he had admitted to such. He was the instigator, coordinator, as well as the convener of the crime and corruption that took place at the VBS Mutual Bank. He's not leading us to somebody more powerful, more significant, or certainly more corrupted than he is in that instance. To what extent is that in the interest of justice? Hmm. I think in this case, they look at it in terms of numbers to say how many other individuals or accused can you be able to gather? Not necessarily maybe on the status of the individuals that are involved or, or to, the, to their level of, of, of being active. Now, it does have a certain advantage if you are going to have the mastermind, the master player, the person who drew up all the plans, executed all the, the payments and the transactions, will be able to testify in court to say, I gave so a million rands, I gave another individual a 300,000 rand, we met on this date, and this is what has taken place. But you need to be very meticulous as the NPA when you're prosecuting the, the other individuals in terms of saying, what other collaborative evidence can I find other than the one that has been produced by the individual individual that has drafted the affidavit? The more collaborative evidence I have, the much better, because that means I'll be able to get the type of prosecution and the type of uh, sentence in which I'm requiring from these individuals, which is why I think Maybe in this case it was really a leak. That particular affidavit shouldn't have made it into the into, into the into the public. What they've done is that they've alerted many other individuals to say these yeah, are investigations that have taken place. Yeah, can I pause you? And I mean, many of them were at pains to respond to that, like former director general of National Treasury, Donda Mohojane. But it was a leak, and the NPA bemoans the fact that it was leak. In fact, they are saying they're considering their legal options, such as potentially interdicting any further publishing and reportage by the media about the substance of that affidavit. It's a, a little too late on the fact. It's, it's a, effectively a moot exercise. But what legal remedy does the NPA have in further reportage and, and broadcasting around this document and any other related matters in this case? Hmm. I, I think on this one, they would say we're now classifying it as certainly evidence that is still being investigated. So if you report on it, you would be jeopardizing the administration of justice and obstructing the administration of justice. So when it comes to common law principles, you can be prosecuted on that. Also, through, during the NPA Act, any disclosure of information, if you're not the individual that is supposed to disclose that particular information, you can be prosecuted for that. That is famous from the... The recent case again us could be hit down and miscarried more that is taking place. So the same provisions would then apply to an individual that has published that particular material information after being told that we're still investigating. You are jeopardizing the manner in which we're doing our investigation. And if you do so, then you're going to come back and punish you. Can I take you back to the 2007-2008 case, which is the independent newspapers versus state security. At the time, independent newspapers published uh, sensitive classified documents pertaining to state security. The minister then took them to court and said, well, uh, you're jeopardizing state security. The court held in favor of independent newspapers to a very large extent in that case, saying that it is in the public interest to know this, right? Here are many actors in this VBS uh, uh, saga who are state actors who corrupted the state and looted from the people, or at least uh, subverted the laws. Uh, surely it is in the public interest in that instance. How does the court adjudicate the balance and calculus between what is in the public interest or what is in the interest of the investigation? Hmm. I think in this case, the court would then say, this is still part of an ongoing investigation. So if you alert individuals that you are coming from you, for you, you are then jeopardizing the very same investigation in which we, we seek to protect. So the other one, maybe you could understand in terms of saying the information is with them, it's going to remain there. If you want to get hold of it, there are ways and channels in which you can apply to. But in this case, what, once the information has been leaked out, once the information is still in possession of the NPA, it is still being utilized for a much greater purpose than the one which maybe within the state security would have been considered. So in this one, it is much more crucial that the information is, is held in abeyance for a bit. It is going to come out later stage when prosecutions are about to take place. And if information is leaked and the very, it lands in the wrong hands, you are jeopardizing the very same investigation and you are going to lead to individuals that ought to have been prosecuted and made to convicted being let scot free just because information was disseminated at the wrong time. Yeah, Bonilla Zagalala, thank you so much for your time and your insights. Always fantastic interlocutor in helping us understand these dense and complex uh, legal matters. Appreciate it.